how you doing? I used to be Jimmy Falcone, a capo in a Gambini crime family. Now, I'm Jimmy McDougal, living in witness protection like a schnook. But I gotta admit, sometimes I can't help but wonder if it ain't my own damn fault. You see, a while back I needed to ask the Don for a favor. Oh, wanna know, taste, sweet fishy? Don Gambini, I come to you on my knees to ask you to call off the hit on my uncle Cheech. Cheech, he talks a lot, but he don't need no- No! By the way, not easy keeping the Don in one piece. He was a great man, a brilliant criminal mind, but kind of a spaz. As I was saying, Cheech don't mean no harm. He's just a little light in the cranial region. Hey, Jimmy, look at that storm brewing. Is that lightning? Son of a bitch, it is lightning. Jimmy, that better be a gun in your pocket. I beg your forgiveness, Don Gambini. But as I was saying, Godfather, my Uncle Cheech is a good man. Always been a good earner for you, and if you could only show him some mercy. Jimmy, you come to me on a good day. I received news today that my beautiful daughter Tina is to wed. On this day, I am a happy man, filled with much love. Does this mean you'll give my Uncle Cheech another chance? Nah, that ship has sailed. But what it means is that you may bring your family to the wedding. Especially that daughter of yours, that Teresa. What a piece of ass! So like I said, sometimes I can't help but wonder if it all ain't my own damn fault. Cause that's why we wound up in witness protection here in Vagina- Regina? Saskatchewan. But if you think I'm gonna beat myself up over it, forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy. With the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor street. Wasn't much along till the mob on once and then. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk it to all the feds. The feds would say they had that they could use him as a pawn. So he rounded out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. I'm just 15. Why do I have to learn to drive now? Because driving is what men do. My father taught me how to drive a getaway car. His father taught him how to drive a getaway car, and his father was run over by a getaway car. Is this supposed to convince me? Petey, there's nothing better in the world than driving. Well, drinking. Drinking and driving. But not together. You don't drink and drive, you stupid you know, I wasn't gonna bring this up, but since you're into this whole bonding thing, my school's having a father-son recycle drive this Friday. Will you come with me? Listen, Petey, I'm pretty sure I have something on Friday. I just haven't made up what it is yet. Now come on, make like we're being chased by the cops! All right, all right, give me the keys. <laughs> keys. <laughs> Okay, what we'll do now is called fleeing the scene of a crime. Drive! 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 The nuclear-powered engine. Not my best idea. What do we do? This is a very delicate situation, son. Just follow my lead. Ow! Ow! My neck! My neck! Oh my god, Pop. That's Richard Wheaton, one of the richest men in the world. Really? In that case... My neck, my back, my knee! You're Richard Wheat, then. Yes, I'm afraid I am. Computer genius, inventor, world-renowned wildlife photographer? I'm also a licensed manicurist. Few people know that. I'm Petey McDougal. This is such an honor. I saw you compete at the Winter X Games. You were awesome. I guess. If we live in a world where silver medals are considered awesome... Where I come from, it's still third place. Uh... This is Jimmy, my parent and or guardian. Easy. I just been in a terrible wreck. You hit me. Okay, we'll call it even. Actually, I should thank you. I was about to go into production with that nuclear engine. Well, nice meeting you. Pop, the least you could do is give the man a ride. No, I can do less. I live just up the hill. Oh, all right. Come on. 
This guy just takes and takes. Your cuticles look very healthy, Jimmy. You can just say the barn door is open, but thanks. Okay, over just a smidge. A little more. I want his thingy pointing to the front door. It's classy, but also informational. Okay, I need a word. Well, if it ain't my special agent McCool. <laughs> Look how handsome you look in your shiny red uniform, all pressed and clean. Oh, have you been working out? Where do you get guns like these? <laughs> my gun was issued at headquarters. I know that's not what you meant, but I felt it prudent to change the subject. And I'm here to tell you that you cannot keep this statue on your lawn. Why not? This is some fancy sh**. For one, a Canadian family would never possess such a thing, and its medium-sized genitalia is a neighborhood distraction. Medium? Hello? Boy, oh boy, can you imagine having a jablon like that? And no freaking arms to get at it? I mean, come on, McCool, guy to guy. If you were him, and you couldn't give it a little tug now and then, you'd want to kill yourself. But you couldn't, because you got no arms. I'm leaving now, Uncle Cheech, and I shall trust you can understand why I won't shake your hand. Resident, resident, Bill, resident... Oh, yay! Victoria's Secret Catalog! Cookie, you cannot throw away your neighbor's mail. That is an indictable offense. Cheese and whiskers, this is someone's baby bonus check. What kind of check now? A baby bonus check, Gina. It's Canada's gift to the parents of all children. Go on, Chief. It was instituted after World War II to reduce financial stress on soldiers' families. Australia has the same baby bonus policy, but theirs is racist to ensure white control of the country, and so not really the same at all. And who's eligible for this baby bonus? All parents of children under seven. My mother got the baby bonus for me, and she always said, I don't need money for this child. I would pay to have a child this good. And we'd laugh, and she would hold me. And then we'd make pancakes and cry because Daddy loved box wine and pornography. But I say too much. For Canada! And the fact that we're not Australia! Most of the art is my own, of course. I paint what I feel and feel what I paint. So, you feel like a clown riding a blue wolf? Sometimes, Jimmy, sometimes. I see you enjoy tennis. No, those are snowshoes, one of my many passions. I once spent an entire winter lost in the forests of Manitoba, with nothing but those snowshoes and a People magazine. The magazine meant nothing, of course, but those shoes, those shoes saved my life. Science was your first love, though, right, Mr. Wheat, then? Same as me? Yes, Petey, same as you. Well, we should get going, Petey. We got that thing. What thing? You know, the thing, the old thingy-thing thing. What are you talking about? I think if I'm reading your father correctly, he wants to leave because he is very, very bored. Yes, thank you. That thing. Come on, Pop, can't we just stay a little longer? I want to see the science lab. You do have a science lab, right? <laughs> Why, they'd take away my nerd card if I didn't. You have a nerd card? Oh, come on, Petey, I gotta get back. Maybe Mr. Wheaton could give me a ride home. Is that all right with you, Mr. Wheaton? Sure, if it's okay with your father. Let me think about this. Get out of my bedroom. There's something you don't say very often. Have you ever thought about being a mother? I've had some scares. Why? How would you like to rip off the government and get something for nothing? Sounds like something I might be interested in. It's called the baby bonus. God, I'm not gonna have a baby. Have you seen what having a baby does to a female body? I mean, I love mom, but look at her. You don't have to have a baby. All you have to do is pretend to be my mother and we get a government check every two weeks. What do you mean, pretend? Like, acting? Yeah, like a movie star. I could do that, but I won't do nudity unless it's intrinsic to the character and tastefully done. So, I'm thinking a 60-40 split. I get 65, because I came up with it. So, uh, you good with 30? How'd it go with Petey's driving? The kid's hopeless. I gotta ask you something, Cook. Be honest. Is he mine? Jimmy, sometimes I'm not even sure he's mine. So where is he? 
I left him out at some jillionaire's house in the country. Petey ran him off the road, so we drove him to his mansion, and it had all kinds of stuff the kid liked. Are you out of your mind? You left a teenage boy with some strange man you know nothing about who has toys and gadgets to lure young boys to his compound? Well, when you put it like that, it sounds bad. Mom! Dad! I can drive! It's so easy! Watch! <laughs> I hope you don't mind that I gave him a quick lesson. How the hell did you learn so fast? Well, why didn't you just tell me that the spark plug ignites the air-fuel mixture so that combustion can occur, and that the intake and exhaust valves open at just the right moment for the engine to fire? <laughs> Man, what else didn't you tell me? Uh, always check your mirrors? Let's drive some more, okay? Of course, son, I'd love to. Let me just get my... <laughs> He's a better father than I am. He's also taller and richer than you are. I swear to God that just slipped. Great breakfast, Cookie. Sure is. They say breakfast is the most important meal in the morning. Mr. Wheaton says a man could survive on a grain of sand for two weeks if he had to. Yeah, if he doesn't mind love handles. Anyway, Ma, we gotta run. I'm taking Gina to the mall. Aw, that fills my heart. Two sisters spending the day together shopping. Since we moved here, I never get to see my sainted sister. That painted hoe. And I miss her so. Here she goes. Time for the waterworks. Boo hoo hoo. You will not disrespect your grandmother that way. You're not my mother. You're my sister. Don't talk back to me, young lady. You know, Mr. Wheaton and his sister have a variety show in England. Jeez, Petey, can we talk about something else for a change? How's about football? Sure. Did you know Mr. Wheaton's great-grandfather invented football? Every time someone throws a pass, his family gets six dollars. You're killing me, Petey. On and on about this guy. It's not like the man can fly. Just invented it. It runs on beetle dung. I've got one for you, Petey. Gayest thing I ever seen in my life. And I watch Glee. OMG. It says here we could go to prison for committing fraud. That's fraud. And only if you get caught. I can't go to prison, Gina. Those guys would go crazy for me. It would be a woman's prison. I'm nuts. Even worse, I'd have to chop off my hair and buy a flannel. Take it easy. No one's going to jail because you are a great actress. Right, 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 I forgot. Okay, let me get into character. Teresa McDougal. Here we go. Say it? Oh, for the love of God. Action! I am Teresa McDougal. This is my daughter, Gina. We are residents of Canada and have never collected the baby bonus because I was working in the Peace Corporation, helping to feed the indigo people of Del Taco. I'm deaf as a stone, dear. I just assigned the numbers. Over there. Now you know why it says, do not write on this part of the form. Mama! Jimmy, are you okay? It looks like there was a hit in here. There wasn't, was there? Nah, come on, Cook. What do you think I am, an animal? I only whack people in the garage. So what's going on? You only make sauce when you're upset. Ah, oh, Cookie, I'm like an open book to you. It's like you open a book and go, geez, there's Jimmy in a book. What is it, big man? Okay, it's just that Petey's hanging out with his new fancy friend and I feel like I've been replaced. You ain't been replaced, you big dope. Petey looks up to you. If you want your boy back, you take him back. Good news, Pop. I invited Mr. Wheaton to the father-son recycle drive. He said yes, so you're off the hook. Aren't you happy? No, I am not happy, Petey. You are my only son, and I will not allow you to go without me. But I already invited him. Then uninvite him. I can't. Then I will. It's time for me to stand up like a man. I will be your escort to the father-son dance. It's not a dance!
Then why did I buy this corsage? <gasps> you comfortable? Can I get you anything? Hmm. There seems to be some confusion in your file. What's your name, sweetheart? Teresa McDougal. Where were you born? Don't mess with us, baby cakes. Your so-called daughter's being questioned in the other room, and she's singing like a canary. So I'll ask you one last time. Where were you born? Canada. All right, good enough. Let's go get your check. So you know for next time, you can do this online. Look, you seem like a nice guy, but Petey is my son, which makes me his father. Which means I'm the one who should take him to the father-son whatchamacallit. Look, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but recycling is one of my pet projects. I invented the blue bin. Few people know that. Why don't we both take him? No son of mine is showing up with two daddies at something as important as a whatchamacallit. Well, I already told him yes. I can't say no now. You can if I tell you to. You will if I tell you to, and I'm telling you to. No, I don't think so, Jimmy. I don't think you know who you're dealing with. Since you brought it up, you do look kind of familiar. Okay. I didn't want to have to do this. Oh my god! You're Jimmy Falcone! All right, you could take the kid. I am not Jimmy Falcone. I don't even know who that is. Of course you are. Come here, I want to show you something. I've always been a mafia nut. I totally followed your trial. So I'm dying to know, when you whacked Sammy the Sparrow, did you really use a lead pipe? No, it was an axe handle. And I am not Jimmy Falcone. And was your Uncle Cheech really the wheel man on the Altamonte Foods heist? Nah, it was Nicky the Nail. It was supposed to be Cheech, but he was holed up in a hotel in Jersey with a school teacher he met. Funny story, really. I mean, I am not Jimmy Falcone! I can't believe I didn't recognize you right away. All right, fine, you got me. What do you want? I want us to be friends, Jimmy. Yeah, for f sake. What do you think would happen if we was made, Cheech? I thought we was made. No, I know we're made men. I mean, what if we was made by somebody here in Vagina? I don't care who done it, Jimmy. Just so long as we was made. <laughs> I hope this is good, Jimmy. I was polishing my knob. Look how shiny it is. Now, what seems to be the problem? Listen, I'm just wondering, hypochondriacally speaking, what would happen if we was made? What are you talking about? You see what I mean? It's hard to follow. I'm just wondering what you feds would do if somebody recognized us. Would you, I don't know, waste him so that the person that was made wouldn't have to do it himself? No, nothing would happen to the person who recognized you, but we would immediately move you and your family north. I thought this was north. There's a more north? So north you'll sh your pants just for the heat. But why do you ask? Have you been spotted? No, not at all. Uh, the thing is, there's this father-son dance coming up at the high school, and I'm wondering if you wanted to take Petey. Why, Jimmy? So you can stay home and watch porn and drink cheap wine? Well, I won't be part of it. But Canada, where poop is your friend and also your blanket. We did it! We totally burned Johnny Canuck! Oh, I, I feel kind of bad now that I know his name. This is gonna buy a lot of candy. All right, but only one piece a night and you must brush immediately after. Will you knock it off? What? I'm still in character. We're home now. You're not my mother. You never had a baby. I knew this day would come. Gina, it's natural to be curious about where babies come from. Who said I'm curious? When a man and a woman love each other, they have a lot of intercourse. A lot. Hey, I am not hearing where babies come from from you. I don't want to get too technical because I'm not a doctor. But when a man's peeper gets hard... Goodbye! You get back here, young lady. I am still pretending to be your mother. And if that's not enough, may I remind you it's my name on the check? Nothing is worth this. You can have it all. And... scene. Petey, I thought it over and... You can go to the father-son whatchamacallit with wheat then. 
Seriously, Pop? Oh man, you're the best! I do what I can, son. Wait then, it's me, Jimmy. I think you are right about us being friends. What do you say we go snowshoeing? Out in the tundra, where no one can see us or hear us for miles. So after the Campanelli boys got through with them, we had to start calling them Johnny Two Legs. <laughs> Amazing. Tell me another one. All right, here's one. A few years back, we was robbing a safe of Frankie three to the right, eight to the left, seven to the right. Nobody could figure out the combination. So we blew it up. Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to wonder if I know too much. I know your name, the crimes you've committed, where you're in hiding. If this were a movie, you'd have to whack me. Yeah, if this was a movie. Oh, crap. Oh, please, no. But you gotta understand, I so don't want to do this. I never had me a fan before. Please, Jimmy. I won't tell anyone, I promise. I don't want to die. I have a family. Well, I don't, but I'm cloning one in the lab. Don't do it, Pop. He's my only friend in Canada. He's my only friend anywhere. You gotta do it, Jimmy. He made you. And by that, I mean he recognized you. Want me to do it, Pop? Get your ass home and clean this kitchen, you son of a bitch. Daddy? Please, Pop, let him go. I'll never ask you for anything again. Just do this for me, your firstborn male, please. Sincerely yours, Pete. All right, Wheaton. You caught yourself a break. Let's head back. Thank you, thank you. And I meant it when I said I'll never tell anyone. Jimmy, I have homes all over the world. Paris, Beijing, Rome. I hang out with world leaders and movie stars. I don't want them to know I live in Regina. You know, my family invented ice fishing.